Greetings! My name is Duncan Berry, and I want to welcome you to our very first episode of the Blue Heart Chronicles, Thanks Be to the Sea. So in thinking about how to kick off our series on the story of life as told by water, we realized there was really only one place we could begin, and that's where we as a species began, in the salty waters of the sea. So come with us on this liquid journey into the operating system of life here on planet Earth. Some say we sprang from the sea. I say we never left. For that liquid salty benevolence is there inside every breath we take, every thought we think, and with every beat of our heart. Thanks be to the sea. And this is not some abstract, yeah, I kind of get what you're talking about thing. It's a deep, active, moment by moment, connected forever at the hip thing. Like this. Stop for a moment. Take a deep breath with me. This rhythmic in and out happens over 25,000 times a day. And each time, it's the gift from an almost invisible drifter in the sea, phytoplankton, quietly delivering 70% of the oxygen you will ever breathe in your lifetime. Now these creatures, they have a direct relationship with the sun, unlike you and I. They want for nothing but for the bathing sea, transporting currents, and sunlight, breathing out so we may breathe in. Thanks be to the sea. And there are a hundred billion cells and counting in this gray braided whirl of a brain that sits atop our shoulders. And each one of them is fashioned from the miracle stuff we so clinically call long chain fatty acid omega 3s. And as you issued forth from your mother's womb, taking your first breath inside your cranium, sloshed 70% of this high octane jet fuel. And most of its molecules, they could be traced back to that same tiny workhorse phytoplankton drifting in an open sea. These oily omega molecules climbing the trophic ladder, leaping from zooplankton to forage fish to salmon and into your mother's mouth. Now this is a well-traveled path taken by thousands of generations of our kind over millions of years. But 200,000 years ago, something different happened to our African cradle of a continent. It was plunged into a wasting drought for thousands of years. Our ancestors finding refuge in caves along the rim of the sea. And their kitchen middens, they tell the story of surviving only by the generosity of the sea. Fish and birds, mammals and seaweeds streaming through their bodies, streaming through their brains. These, our parents, 6,000 generations removed. Now those who study the history of our brains, they credit this window of time with the explosive growth of our cerebral cortex, that part of the modern human machine that defines us, allows us to create higher concepts, like the language I'm using right now. So you can follow me down this verbal path or squeeze meaning out of tangled letter shapes on a page. Thanks be to the sea. And this brings us to the heart of the matter. That same red blood coursing through your veins, it started out as rain generated by massive acts of evaporation and condensation of the sea. That great puppeteer pulling the strings on a planet where life literally falls from the sky. Every being feeling its reach in the dry bottom of desert canyons to the slow time of glaciers. And that salt in your veins is a call and response to the sea sharing the exact same diluted, tangy amount in every drop. And in a planet mimicking microcosm, the ratio of solid bone to liquid blood in your body precisely mirrors that of the land masses of Earth to the seas that encircle them. Wonders never cease. So some say we sprang from the sea. I say we never left. For that liquid, salty benevolence is inside every breath we take, every thought we think, and with every beat of our heart. 
thanks be to the sea. So there you have it, our declaration of interdependence. And we hope you'll join us on the next Blue Heart Chronicle, the story of life as told by water, where we're going to trace the H2O molecule from its origins in the earliest days of the universe to how it ended up here, driving all life on planet Earth today, and why we should treat this precious liquid as if our lives and the lives of generations to come depended on it, because they do. We'll see you next time on the Blue Heart Chronicles.